a lot of great guys out there and they absolutely love dancing with new girls. <laughs> Here, give it this. Tell her at least thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. All right. All right, T. Hello. He left a trust fund for you, and it was payable based on you graduating from dance school. something just tell me man i don't want to be out here looking crazy i would tell you if i knew something because it sounds like you know something cuz yo what and i'm totally scared to tell t well why are you afraid to tell him you think he'll have you killed or something i love my music but I feel like being a servant is my calling too. Yeah, okay. So like, how do I do them both at the same time? Oh, that man will praise the Lord. Come on. Ah, yeah. Seems you and my brother have been spending quite a bit of time together. Oh, he's just helping with the music. <laughs> oh, just helping with the music. <laughs> Sir, listen, can you please tell him that Audi is here? No one gets Do you in. know any other word to say? Yeah. You do audio? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bro, hold my phone. What? What do you mean, what? You've been acting weird and crazy and fidgeting and... I want you to be my wife! Oh, wait! Oh! Somebody help! I'm pregnant! Somebody baby. help me! Help quick, baby! All right, just calm down, baby. I got you. Oh, just wait. God. Just wait a minute. I'm calling. Oh, my Please, goodness. somebody help! You're almost at the finish line. Don't you give up, give up, not now. Let's go! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> There's always some good music. What's up, everybody? This is the day, the night, the evening, the time that the Lord has made. I don't know about you guys, but we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love. It never fails us. And even though we're good at being human, God, you are better at being God. So thank you so much for another opportunity to worship you and to praise you. I'm thanking you, Lord, for our special guest tonight. Thank you for all that he touches everywhere he goes. Bless him spiritually, financially, emotionally, everywhere he goes, everywhere he ministers, Lord. Let the, by the droves, by the millions, by the hundreds, by the thousands, let people come, Lord, running, begging, what must we do to be saved? And we'll be careful to glorify you and to praise you. Now, though, now bless all of our listening audience and our viewing audience, Lord, for those that are watching. They, they will be blessed tonight by the discussion that we give. We'll be, care, we'll be careful to glorify you and to give you all the praise, the glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's up, everybody? Hey, I am your brother, your homie, your boy. Mr. Ryan Rutley, and I'm so thrilled about tonight. We're not going to waste any time. Uh, we definitely want you guys to stay tuned for the movie Hosanna. We are so excited. We finally finished the movie, guys. This is our first one, so we learned a lot. Uh, we were able to uh, understand what it took uh, to create a film, and we're going to be bringing it to a city near you. So hopefully you guys will meet us in every city and state that we're going to bring it, and hopefully our artists that we're talking to tonight maybe if you guys like and share this video enough tonight that you can see him in person yourself. 
Uh, he's a great friend and brother of mine. We're not going to belabor the time at all. He is no stranger to the gospel music community. He is a wonderful gospel recording national artist uh, who is traveling the world. He plays no games when it comes down to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, literally by any means necessary. He's cool. He's fashionable. He's funny. But most importantly, guys, this guy is amazingly anointed. He has been through uh, so many, uh, just like all of us, so many different testimonies, which we will we'll dive into a little bit tonight. Uh, we're going to dive into his music, his career, how he got started. And then we're going to talk to him as far as where he's going. You guys, I'm so proud of him. He is a gospel guru. He knows gospel music, but he's creative and he's constantly creating content for all of us to watch, to share. Please welcome to the platform tonight, my friend and my brother, the one and only Mr. Robert Hawkins. What's up, Rob? What's going on, brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had like my cheer, my cheer sound or something. Like <laughs> Rob, it's so good to have you tonight, man. God bless you, bro. Thank it's you, so man. good to be here. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the film. Yes, sir. Um, it was you, one part that I was just a little, uh, <laughs> I was, um, I, I didn't understand it. I was a bit uh, confused. Talk to me, Rob. Talk to me, Rob. I, I didn't see Robert Hawkins, the scene <laughs> with Robert Hawkins. Was, it was a scene, right, that was created for me. Did, did I not make the cut or? That was the confusing part for you, Rob. <laughs> that was the confusing part. Right. Congrats to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, we had to do the first one so that we could bring you on for the next one. Oh, how about that? I'll take it. Is that okay? It's, okay. it's all right. <laughs> and we also, uh, I will I will be more than daring to say this because, Robert, you have great music, man. You have great music. Man, uh, to God be the glory. Yeah. So, man, we got to talk about that on hopefully the next soundtrack or something, brother, because you... You're, you're a genius at, at your craft and um, just watching you over these years, man. Uh, we don't talk every day, but man, I'm so proud of you. And I want the world to know that I'm proud of you, man, uh, for your testimony, for your music, uh, and just for your creativity, bro. So you 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 rock it, bro. You rock it. I praise God. Thank you so much. My pleasure, bro. Yes. Let's go ahead and dive in, man. Listen, so uh, for all of those that are watching tonight, we're live with Robert Hawkins. Like, share, comment. We're going to have a great time tonight, guys. Rob, the first question we have for you, man, tonight as our special guest is what was your childhood like, Rob? Well, um, I'm originally from Chicago, Chi-Town, Chi -town. West Side. K Town, <laughs> and you know, y'all know what it is, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so um, that's where I was actually born. Um, I moved to Michigan, uh, Kalamazoo, probably around seven or eight years old. Uh, my grandparents uh, pretty much raised me. I used to go back and forth to Chicago. So I came from a family oriented uh, environment. It, all of us cousins. We pretty much stayed in the same household. The grandparents raised all of their grandkids, pretty much. The aunties and uncles. We grew up fighting. We grew up yep. loving. We grew up <laughs> seeing it all, um, from the good to the bad. Um, yep. I was born in church. I don't even think I was born in the hospital. They say I was born in Cook County Hospital, <laughs> but I think I was born in the church, okay? In the church. <laughs> we had to go to church sick, well, yeah. Fever, no fever. <laughs> yep. Um, we grew. I grew up in a family church. Actually, uh, it was called the Church of the Living God. Um, my uncle was the pastor, Stephen Hawkins. My grandfather was the deacon, and so I came from a small church where I was the usher. You know, when you have a small church, you have to function in different uh, uh, entities. So I was the usher, yep. choir director greeter <laughs> treasurer and everything so yep um but we had a lot of fun moments um very close family um we've had a lot of struggles um i have childhood trauma um we've yeah. been through a lot of things uh during our family in our family just as anybody else right, um right. but one thing our grandparents uh taught us is to stick together mm -hmm. um no matter what and i i do know this um with our family we may not um, 
like each other all the time. But somebody in trouble or somebody needs some prayer, Come on. <laughs> somebody needs some help, we pretty much start there. Coming, <laughs> so, coming together. That's what my childhood was like. It was fun. Um, I was smothered. I will say my grandparents really, of course, now that I'm mature and older and wiser, they covered me. And I didn't know what that meant at right. a young age. I couldn't do what everybody else did. I couldn't stay at relatives' house. I couldn't stay out late. I yeah. thought my grandparents were so mean. And they told me uh, once I got older that I will appreciate it and that I will thank them. And both of my grandparents prior to them passing, mm -hmm. um, I was able to tell them thank you because I did understand eventually what they were doing uh, as well as my mother um, so I can be who I am today and do, so I can definitely be who God has called me to be. Um, they always say I was the little boy that I talked a lot. I told on everybody. And watch this, Ryan. I used to tell on myself <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So, you were so just honest. Yeah. My grandfather, wow. the family jokes about it, but he used to say, boy, keep your big mouth shut. Because <laughs> I used to tell <laughs> everything. If I seen it, I didn't keep secrets. I told it. Okay. Right, um, right. Ran out in the streets of Chicago, yeah. all that, you know, <laughs> digging in the toilets, everything. Right. So um, right. that's pretty much was was my, my childhood. Yeah. Wow. That's special, man. And uh, God bless your family, man, your great grandparents, or your, excuse me, to the late grandparents uh, yeah. who you were able to thank before they passed. God bless them um, and even your parents, man. And and that really takes us to the next question, Rob. How did you get your your start maybe in music? And in ministry, I think you said that they were deacons already, and so you was already in church. Yeah. But how did you get started, man? Like, how did you get? Yeah, started? professionally. So again, I was always in church. My first established church, I'll say, um, I went to was called Mount Zion, actually, in Kalamazoo, Mount Zion Baptist Church. Doctor Addis Moore, that's my spiritual covering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, that's where I started for real, for real. Where. Wow. Um, when I was in my early teens, um, I went there. I was directing the youth choir, then one of the adult choirs, and just learning from different older directors and things of that nature. My inspirations were John P. Key, of yes, course, Daryl Coley, of course. Um, I, used to, I used to model after his singing. I thought I, was, I tell everybody Daryl Coley is my dad. And John P. Kid's my uncle. Because <laughs> I like that good, just flat singing, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I used to envision myself uh, with a group, just like John P. Key, with wow. me leading, sing, you know, with the band, with singers. And um, wow. I will never forget one day, myself and uh, the drummer, Pastor Moore's son, Michael, we uh, were after rehearsal one night. And uh, we was just sharing. It was me singing. He was on the drums. And I envisioned myself with a group. Wow. And I saw it. We were singing. Um, so I used to, when I was younger, I used to get invited to sing a lot of solos by mm -hmm. myself. So I'll sing, you know, um, at the age of eight, my first solo was Jesus by Shirley Caesar. Jesus, oh, yeah. Jesus, oh, Jesus. Yep. And I will never forget. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to say we got happy. Got happy <laughs> I'm a <yeah>. little boy <laughs> crying. <laughs> you know, my grandparents said that they saw smoke. It, it represented the anointing in the pulpit. Wow. As I was ministering, people, since I was a little boy, people used to shout, cry, and just the spirit of God used me at a very early age. And that's when I knew I was called to sing and to minister through song. Um, because they could not shut me up. I used to get in trouble at home for singing. I used to get in trouble at school for singing. Wow. I used to, they, I just couldn't shut up. I always was singing. And I used to play the organ a little. I knew to play a couple songs. Yeah. And so with that being said, um, I had got invited to this church after I had that moment, me and the pastor's son. And I said, you know what? I, I knew some people. I was like, let me call, you know, some people ask them to sing backgrounds with me. Let me try to switch it up a little. Mm. We sung at this church called, of course, Galilee Baptist Church. Never forget it. I had, it was nine of us. I had three sopranos, three altos, three wow. tenors, keyboard player, Valencia Jennings, um, drummer. Ooh. And when I say we did right here, I've been weighed. When I say that was my moment of like, this is like for real. Yeah. We kept going. I, I caught the singers again. I was like, y'all, I think we should stay together. 
and they were down. And so this was oh. like when I was like 18, 17, 18. And we started just, you know, doing local gigs yeah. and things of that nature. And um, as far as me, I'll say my professional started, my, my professional career started. Steve Johnson, huge shout out to Steven Johnson wow. from Detroit, pretty much in uh, Ohio right now. Yeah. Um, Paul Moore used to uh, follow us in Kalamazoo. And he really was just supportive of my music ministry at a young age. So he was like, I got to connect you with this guy, Steve Johnson. So Steve produced actually my first live recording I had at the age of 18. In wow. Kalamazoo, over 2,000 people showed up. Wow. Um, and of course, I was young, so I was immature. I didn't know nothing. But gotcha. that's when things began to actually be real because we did a professional live recording. And I know what that was. You know what I'm saying? And so wow. um, at that time, we we had a little success. I had opened up for Ty Trivet. Um, we had went on the uh, Dr. Bobby Jones Gospel, one of his shows. Uh, yeah. um, and then, you know, I'm young. I'm still trying to hang out. I'm right. trying to do everything. So Absolutely. I didn't take it serious, if that yeah. makes sense. So, yeah, God allowed me to, you know, take a break. And yeah. uh, he was, I didn't know, but he was conditioning me for what is to come um, now. And so I'll say I, I had to wait. Literally, yeah. I'm going to say about, I think, 11 or 12 years where I start working in the background, singing in the backgrounds, and um, start managing different local artists right. and getting experience and things of that nature. And it was different for me because I was always yep. used to leading, being up front. Yeah. And people are like, when are you gonna be? Why are you singing background for this? Are you supposed to be leading. And I'm like, I don't know, but I know God has wow. worked with something. It was humbling me. It was humbling me for what's to come. And I did. I had no clue. I was enjoying it though. That's the thing. I love to be singing. You were too. Okay. You were serving yeah. other people as if it was for yourself, man. I yeah. Remember. Uh, big shout yeah. out to John Player. You John Player really, yeah. really helped his career, and you still were singing background with him. Managing, managing them, them, doing work and doing the business, yep. doing the social media, vocal coaching, studio. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's my guy, John Player. That's my that's my brother. Yep. And so that experience, you know, just trickled over to my mm -hmm. solo career, which launched in 2016. And I give praises to God for Reggie Strong. Yes. Because Reggie Strong was at my first live recording 13 or 14 years ago before he was with Ricky Dillers and all that, right? And wow. Reggie told me, this is when I was a year, I just had to start being clean from drug addiction. And Man. Reggie called me out the blue in 2015. It was like, hey, what happened to the song Happy that you recorded? <clears throat> and I was like, we ain't do nothing with it. You know, I was like, it's still, he was like, let's call Steve. Let's, I, he said, God told me to sow it to you and re-record this. I said, no, he didn't. Because <laughs> I was so, Ryan, I was right. so stuck now. I was wow. complacent in the background. Yeah. I didn't see my future i didn't see my purpose ah. my purpose was just right here yeah and i said well let me pray about it you know we get so yeah. Yeah. You know, some stuff we don't have to pray like yeah. but i literally i would say within 24 hours i will never forget this the voice i heard god says he said to go i got you mm. and since 2016 i have literally been moving forward there has been some obstacles here and there but listen Absolutely. i have not given up but I am I'm thankful to God that I'm full time oh, on the road man. ministry. And it comes with the price. It comes it with does. the cost. But I thank God that He, you know, conditioned me and He's continuing to, of course, grow me and, and build me up. And you know, it's a lot to deal with. However, it's worth it. It is. Yeah. Wow. Man, I'm so proud of you. Hey, with that being said. We're going to come back in just a few minutes, guys. We're going to take a quick commercial break. I want you guys to enjoy this awesome song uh, that Steve just came out with. And it's an amazing video. It's called Steve. Check it out. Every night as I lay me down to sleep, I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. Lately it seems like you've been just out of reach But I still believe cause you promised me you never leave Sometimes I feel I'm drowning in the ocean Trapped inside of my own mind, some hours feel like days I've tried to find my way back to the surface With the sound of the crashing waves 
I can hear you say Don't you give up, give up Let your heart be at ease Don't you give up, give up Not now, not now, not now Don't you give up, give up You're almost at the finish line Don't you give up, give up For me, God, you never fail to supply my need. So let the heart of my Lord be at ease, 'cause I believe You promised me. Sometimes I feel like I'm drowning in the ocean, trapped inside of my own mind. Some hours feel like this. I'm trying to find my way back to the surface. With the sound of the crashing waves, I can hear you say, "Don't you give up? He's been waiting on you. Don't you give up? Now, 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 You can't afford to give up now. Don't you give up? Now, now, Don't you ever give up? about that song better days how yes. did you come up with that song and the concept uh the music video is amazing big shout out to the director and to your team yes. and to, you know the props the pills robert man how did you how did you come up with that song man so the song was it was birthed from um one of my favorite scriptures jeremiah 29 and 11 God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you hope and a future. And so uh, we did a writing session. Huge shout out um, to John Trax. He produced, uh, co-wrote Joel Barnes. They used to be with Maverick City. Yeah. Um, he called in the squad, um, David Brown. And so we got together and we actually birthed this song from scratch. We did a writing session. Um, that oh 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 yeah. oh, it kind of started with that, and yeah. the lyrics, a lot of those lyrics, Joel Barnes. That, that was pretty much my first writing session, and I was around some writers. Okay, writers, and so yeah. just we kind of vibed off each other, but um, and that's how the song came about. Yeah, and that wow. song was actually it was written and formed during the pandemic. The song that was completed uh year of 2020 and just Man. released this year yeah that song is so fire and it's 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 ripe for now people mm. need to hear that and we're going into the thanksgiving day season um man and and i guess this leads us to the next question 
How important is it to share your testimony and your music, Robert? And I think that's yeah. the headline for tonight for you. Yeah, it is. Um, again, since 2016, I was a year uh, free from drug addiction. Praise God. And, um, and, I, and I bless God for that. And, and the reason why I brought that up is because when Reggie, uh, when he reached out to me, I was actually just pretty much, I was struggling. I had been struggling years prior to that with the crack, with everything, right? Yeah. And so I was in such a dark space. Thank it you, was Lord. just like, no, um, I ain't gonna be able to do this. Mm -mm. Yeah. So when we released Happy, which was my first single that I professionally I released yeah. in 16, um, Reggie was very touched by my story, how God just brought me out. And at the time, again, I was just like, you know, he was like, you need to share your story any chance you get. And I was like, well, no, I need to pray about it. He said, what do you need to pray about to mm -hmm. so people can know your story? What is there to pray about? And Ryan, I'm, I kid you not, you know, because it's, it is some type of embarrassment. There is some, still some type of shame attached to my you. story. And, you know, and I, my stuff always seemed to go public. I tell them myself or whatever the case may be. Um, right. It's nothing to just I'm proud of or I'm just like, OK, it's cool. Right. So I really need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that gives me the boldness to speak for me, and I'm I'm not lying, man. Lives have really, really been transformed, man. and people have been touched by my music ministry. Thank you. A lot of times, based upon me sharing my story, no matter how much time I got, it seemed like the Holy Spirit always prompted <laughs> me to mention it, and so people yeah. can see a living testimony, and it brings so much better understanding of these songs because any of my music whether if someone wrote them for me or i co-wrote or what have you is tied into my experience not about yeah. something that i heard not about so i related to my personal experiences so when i'm on a road ministering and um sh being able to share man people are touched and that's what they they can connect to it because it's real life stories addiction yeah. depression things of that nature yes yeah man you know i'm so proud of you and you remind me of revelation i believe it's 21 it says that we overcome by the word of our testimony mm -hmm. and the blood of the lamb and robert you know many people live their lives and some people go to their grave and they never discover their purpose and it sounds like you did even from the very thing like you said your scripture your favorite scripture um, in Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the thoughts that, and that I have towards you, said the Lord. They're thoughts of good and not evil to give you an expected end. end yeah. And that's beautiful, man. Yeah. That's beautiful. Another, you don't look nothing like what you've been through, Rob. Oh, look, one of the ladies, uh, old mothers, I sang at a church in Detroit, and I told my story about crack. She walked up to me after church, Ryan. She said, she kept looking at me. And I'm like, what is she? She said, baby, you blessed me today. And I'm like, praise God. And I'm like stuck because she keep looking at my mouth. She said, and you still got teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, ma'am. And they all mine. I said, God didn't take my teeth. Okay, praise God. <laughs> and Ryan, here, here's another story um, that I've experienced just randomly. Yeah. When I, as I share my story is I've had grown men, women, people will come up to me after church. And yeah. that's really the key thing, the church building, because again, everybody is like, we all supposed to be perfect. So everybody have this mask, this facade yeah. on as if we ain't going through nothing yeah. or we ain't been through nothing. Come on. And here I come raw like, look, I used to crack okay. Look that's at right. me, you know, and that destroys jokes. And I've had people come to me and be like, your story, helped me. I'm dealing with this right now. I had nobody to talk to. I couldn't even tell my wife. I couldn't tell my family. I've been hiding this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And when God uses me, again, it's not about me. When he uses my story to give him glory, okay, that's where I continue to just praise him. I continue to share. Yes. Because he said, if I be lifted up, yeah. I would draw all men. And that's, oh. that's what's happening. Man. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, I am beyond words blessed by the testimony of Robert tonight. 
Um, let's take another quick commercial break in the season of the holiday festivities. Let's enjoy the music ministry of my brother, Robert Hawkins. Go tell it on the boxing, y'all. This is it right here. <laughs> Put your hands together. We don't go tell it on the mountain. This is something you can sing at your church. Say it. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills. Over the hills. <laughs> I, know, you know, right? I don't Tamarita. church like that. <laughs> That's an easy reprise, okay? Go on. <laughs> easy reprise right there, Doc. Reggie Love Strong, it. we uh he produced that uh album 2016. We've been rocking it. <laughs> wow, that song is hot as well, man. You you so far we are two and old, brother. We got we just like the lions, we, we doing good this year, okay. <laughs> You got a great records, man. These are great records. These these Thank you. testimonies that you're sharing. Thank you uh, for being transparent. And let me say this openly, Robert. You and I have known each other for years and years. Uh, and so I'm standing with you strong and bold tonight, as if I would have never known any of these testimonies, man. Mm. I stand with you to tell you that I'm proud of you, and that uh, not only you but all of us, the Bible says, have fallen short of the glory of God. But that's the blessing is that when your heart is in a position and posture to say, Lord, you know what? Hey, I'm wrong and you're right. When, yeah. No matter what state we're, that we're in, I believe in you. I believe in your power. I believe in your resurrection power. And I believe that you can save me and heal me. And not only that, but make me whole. Then I stand with that. And, and saying whether it's somebody who's looking at pornography, whether it's somebody who's dealing with 
drug addiction, whether it's somebody who's dealing with the lottery or betting, whatever addiction it is, mm -hmm. man, we all need God, man. We need, we need each other. We need yeah. each other. And I love the fact that you, uh, it seems that you have a good community of people. It, it don't need to be everybody. But it's just people, right? People that believe in you and that that can push you, Rob, you know? Yeah. And you know, that's important um, yeah. is community. People that actually, uh, I got this from Pastor Wes Morgan, which is my yeah. brother. Um, yeah. To understand the difference that people that are actually caught to you, it's a difference wow. just having anybody in your life, but people that you're called to right. or that are called to you. And I am, that's one thing, no matter how low I've gone or how dark yeah. it's been, I still have people around me like, bro, come home. We love you. That's right. We're here for you. That's right. Even bro. though you done me wrong, I heard from you. Like, I love yeah. you. Like, you love me. What do you love? <laughs> like, and that's really unconditional love. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And another aspect of the story is, you know, last year I started a nonprofit because yes. God told me to go back to the community where I come from. It was called the Recovery Gathering. And that's where we celebrate recovery through worship for yes. purpose. And what we do, we gather, you know, it's a gathering space, a uh, safe space for those who suffer from addiction, mental illness, trauma, mm. or any need of rehabilitation can wow. gather to celebrate through songs of worship, man. And uh, our the recovery gathering, my band and I, we partner with different substance abuse, mental health uh, organizations, if you will. And we we provide and we connect local resources wow. and we put on a free concert, you know, and my band and singers, we a full free concert quality wow. because what happens in recovery, of course, music, and most people love music. And I remember when I was in inpatient rehab, um how you know you you've been addicted to hardcore drugs and you gotta pass people treat you differently right people don't give you a second chance you get right. we get the leftovers uh we get left out you know the second so god told me to know just as if they were going to see their favorite artists he wants we want to have them to experience that same level of excellence through him and that's wow. why we celebrate recovery through worship for a purpose because not only do we worship but we still have a purpose after that during that man yeah and that's, that's the rich. recovery gathering.org for more information because we travel brian we've been to houston we set up right outside of a big mission 300 some pay, uh, clients we've been to chicago we set out right in front of the rehab inpatient rehab facilities We've been to San Diego, Michigan, everywhere. So as we're growing, we celebrated one year in June. Every song that I release now, the theme is always that. So last year was Things Will Work Out. This Got year you. is Better Days. And next year, coming soon. <laughs> ah, he on the roll, y'all. He on the roll. He on the roll. This is, this is, this is amazing, Rob. This is, this is just so amazing, man. What, what are the three or what would be some tips that you would give worship leaders today? Okay, to, I know this is cliche, but to have a personal relationship with God. And, yeah. and what I mean by that, let's break it down. Because cool. when we worship him, we worship him, of course, in spirit and in truth. Our job and our, our responsibility is to lead people to God and to usher them into his presence. I always tell people this, the comp the compliments that I do get is you are, I'm authentic, I'm organic, it's real. Right. Why? Because I don't put on a facade, I don't just get at church or in front, once I get a mic and then in front of a stage, oh, hallelujah. No, this is what goes on at home. This yep. is a continued conversation with God throughout the day, throughout the week, whether I'm feeling good, whether I'm feeling bad, I still include him throughout my day. So having a personal relationship, number one, is very important. Um, number two, um, I understand that I'm not God and I'm not Jesus, meaning I'm not called to everybody. Wow. I'm not. Wow. I think that's huge. You know how it is when you sing in there, you minister in front of people, you want everybody to get with you, you want everybody to just be connected. Yeah. No. That, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Because yeah. we can get upset. I said put your hands together and give God some praise. 
<laughs> okay? And, you know, and we grew up like, if people ain't clapping, we're like, you know, anything dead ought to be buried. And, Ryan, because, watch this, of wisdom experience, yeah. whether I'm saying in front of the most charismatic audience versus the more conservative, and I do a lot of yeah. Seventh-day Adventist churches, like a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, Luther, all the churches, right, where yes. I was seeing, here go another tip to know your audience. Know your audience. You no, can't. No. You got to know and connect with the audience. Yes. So, but I say all that to say this: you have some people will sit like this, and when you're done, they like, and and walk up to you and be like, "I was so blessed." And in my mind, I'm like, Girl, you didn't show that, you know. But right. everybody expresses right. differently. And here go my third one. If people gonna get mad at this one, all right. Okay, watch this. As a worship leader, you don't have to lead every song <laughs> that does not make okay. a mature worship leader knows how to delegate and spread and, and help and let other people lead certain songs because you can give more of this song versus myself i don't have to lead every song as a worship leader man that comment alone is that's probably one of the richest principles any worship leader can give because we feel like we are the it factor. And that's so Luciferian. <laughs> it's so Lucifer to feel like, well, I'm responsible for the praises, so y'all got to go through me. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing a half is a lot, but to influence a third is pretty close, bro. Like, yeah. that's a big number, you know? <laughs> Uh, and with that being said, what would you say would be considered, what is the mind of a menstrual to you? I saw the question and I was like, how do I answer this? Yeah. I, I believe it's preparation is key. That's so good. Preparation. And wow. that's from, you know, again, meditation. It's not all spiritual. That's from you know, choosing, knowing what's best for whatever audience it is. My main objective is to be effective, no matter where yeah. I go, no matter who I connect with, That's no cool. matter what I do. My main objective is to be effective. That means there's there are going to be many methods to whatever it is I'm trying to do. What works for you may not work for the next. What works for this audience or this ministry may not work for that. So I believe preparation and being proactive is definitely the main objective. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Man, Robert, thank you for your time tonight. This was an amazing episode and y'all continue to chime in now, tomorrow, later. Uh, I want you guys to watch this over and over again. Um, Robert, therapy, the therapy is the fact that you don't have to feel enslaved to any of the things you've been through. And I'm, I'm proud of you because it makes all of us realize, wait a minute, what's my story? What have I been through? What, mm -hmm. what is it that I need to be singing about now? You know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy proud of you, man. And uh, man, I want to thank, I thank you. you. Tonight. Yes, sir. Give us your cash app name so we can share that with the people. Uh, Robert. Hi, glory. Yes. Money God. sign. <laughs> I am. <laughs> hey, wait up. Money sign. Yep. I am R Hawkins. So that's money sign. I am I A M R H A W K I N S. No, I appreciate it this full time. Y'all know. Absolutely. Everything goes right back to ministry. Ryan, thank yeah. you so much for always being a, a solid brother that you Man, know, no matter what, you have been there. Yes, You've sir. been very encouraging. Yes, mm -hmm. I may talk to you over the phone, reach you maybe three times a year because you don't respond, <laughs> praise the Lord. But when you do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And Rob, I want you to know, and I'm saying this publicly, for the rest of my life, I got your back, man. I got your I back. I appreciate that. And I mean that. Uh, and, and, and Robert, we need more artists like you um, mm. in the industry, but also in the ministry. Wow. You can say that. Wow. Um, because, and I really, uh, I want to take this time, if you could, Rob, give you an opportunity before we close out to speak to the person, man, as if it was an altar call, because there's somebody that's watching and they feel like, man, you know, um, I feel like giving up. I feel like throwing in the towel. I feel like going back to my old ways and, 
and 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 Robert tell them in a in a in a godly way that they don't have to do that. Yeah, and the first thing is I understand number one, um, what it's like to wanting to give up and wanting to just throw in the towel. So that's normal. You are normal feeling that way. However, let's redirect and let's go back to memory lane. As I say, uh, think about a time where you thought about giving up before, but because you endured, because you went one more day, watch this, wow. because you went one more hour, Thank God you, showed up. So just like he did it before, it's simple. You don't see it, but it's right there. Even in the song, Better Days, uh, it's a line that says, you're almost at the finish line. Yes. That's the word for my brother or my sister who feel like giving up right now. You're almost at the finish line. So yes. don't finish before it's really ordained for you to finish. Amen. Wow. Man, man, man. With that being said, hey, y'all, we're going to leave out of here. I want you to stay in the back green room with me, Rob. But listen, you guys, we're here tonight live with my friend, my brother, none other than the incomparable, the anointed, the awesome, uh, the hopefully soon nominated, my yes, brother, sir. <laughs> my brother, Mr. Oh my God. Robert Hawkins, I mean, and they can they, stay connected with me. I am <laughs> Hawkins on every social media platform there is across the board. Every I am our Hawkins, everything. Thank yes. y'all so much. Yes, thank you too, Rob. As a matter of fact, we're going to leave out of here tonight, y'all, on this song. And I didn't even tell y'all I was going to do this, Rob. But, you know, we're going to do it because you're here tonight. We dedicate this to you, Rob. The song is simply, y'all, happy. God bless you guys. Oh. Happy Thanksgiving uh, to everybody. Don't eat too much turkey. Robert, you got big plans for Thanksgiving? You and the family, y'all doing something? I don't know yet. If, if uh, I'm waiting on a booking. So if I can make some money, praise the Lord. Man, I'll call my family. <laughs> I tell you what, Rob, are you in Michigan this year for Thanksgiving or Chicago? Or I'm uh, in Florida? Michigan. I'll be in Michigan. You're Michigan. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk after this, bro. Okay. Okay. We're gonna have to talk. We gonna, we gonna, right. we got, I got something for you, man. Okay. <laughs> All right now. All right, everybody. This is again my friend, my brother. I am R Hawkins. Go follow him. Go to I am R Hawkins on uh, Cash App. Let's sow a seed into our brother tonight and encourage him and let him know we've not done listening to his music. All right, y'all. God bless you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. We're going out with the song. Happy. Come on. If you're happy tonight, let me see you clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. If you're happy tonight, Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you clap if your hands. If you're happy, you're happy. If you know it, you know it. Come on, sing it again all over the place. Come on, if you're happy, say it. Come on. And you know it. Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. If you're happy. Tonight. The Lord has blessed you, made you home and kept you, been a friend you was lonely, he woke you up this morning, stand on your feet and praise him, everybody let's bless him, the Lord's giving you joy, peace and happiness, listen, I said clap your hands if you're happy tonight, clap your hands if you're happy tonight, clap your hands if you're happy tonight, come on. Your hands and let me see you clap. If you're happy, if you're happy. Come on and say, if you know it. You know it. So one more time, one more time. Yeah, yeah. Happy. If you're happy and you know it, you know it. Come on. Listen, say, let me see you clap your hands and.